friends, welcome to the show. If today is your first time in our channel, we want to extend you a very warm welcome. If you've been here before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. If it is your birthday, we want to extend you a very warm, heartfelt, happy birthday. Today we're going to do a review of our Cobalt saw, which is a follow-up review. I did a review a few months after I purchased the saw, and now we're doing a review two years later and 300 projects later, which I consider really what review should be. Something that we have used for a while and, and know all its quirks and know Elpida is moving her head and I'm trying to figure out what she's doing there. Uh, so if you want to see a review of this store, so stick around and you will learn if my opinion has changed or not. I will put a card here if you want to watch the original review, which I don't think has changed. But uh, if you want to see both, you can see how I feel two years later. Now I've had the saw for over two years and I've used it to build over 300 projects. Right? So I'm very familiar with this saw. Before I even review the saw, I'm going to say that in order to get the most out of a table saw or any saw, you need to build yourself a, a sled. The sled is an amazing tool that makes your saw more versatile and much safer in a variety of cuts and also allows you very easily to make repetitive cuts, especially if you use our, our little trick with the hot glue, which uh, simply putting a, a small piece of wood of, of a scrap where we want it to stop and then we can make repetitive cuts until the cows come home, right? Or if the cows don't come home? Let them be asked. Oh. So we're going to take this off and talk about the saw itself. In my first review, a lot of controversy happened with this plate because in my manual, it did not say that you need to put the screws underneath. And in my logical mind, it makes no sense to put the screws underneath, so I put them on top and there was a lid. And people say, oh, you need to read the manual, you don't know what you're doing. Well, here are the results. This is still crap. In or out, up or down, this plate is crap. This is the worst thing of this saw, in my opinion, right? I mean, look at the deflection it has here. This is just unacceptable. And by the way, it would be fixed if the screws were on top, with washers underneath. I'm just saying, you know, for all those that say, oh, you didn't follow the directions. And for the record, my manual, my, my instruction manual did not have those directions. I think I bought this saw when it was fairly new. And there are always revisions of uh, direction manuals, specifically if they miss something. What I like about the saw, it has been very good. We have had no material we could not cut with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now we have used it sometimes to its limit and yeah. we have popped the breakers a few times. People have probably seen a few times. And <laughs> they couldn't see it because the lights went out. That's what they noticed then. Uh, and as you can see, for my friendly safety police, the saw is unplugged, so don't panic that I'm touching the blade with my bare hands. I promise you nothing bad will happen to me. That would be a good Halloween thing and then go ah! have a little fake finger. No? Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I hope that doesn't like funny. I don't like that kind of funny. Now I've used this kind of blade. This is my second or third blade and it is getting to the end of its life I think. Uh, but I'm thinking to move to this which is a more uh, finished kind of, of, of blade versus this which is a rough cut blade even though this makes unbelievably good cuts I think, right? It's pretty decent cuts, yeah. Almost finished quality cuts I would say. So the blade moves up and down with ease but locking it when you want to move it to make a, a miter can be challenging and as you see right now trying to make a miter 
can be challenging. And the reason why this is problematic, you might need to cut and... Here solve. is the mechanism. And the lock is right here. And now it doesn't want to engage. Oh, sorry, there. And when you especially go this direction, it's very easy to knock it off. So that is an aspect. I don't know if I would say like or dislike, but something that if you have this so you have to be very very cognizant of. That especially when you go counterclockwise, you can knock this accidentally and not even realize it. So this is an area I think the saw can improve. I do like the big, very positive uh, switch that it has here. And the dust collection, I feel, is pretty decent. What would you say? It's all right. We have to make, you know, a, a custom fit thing to get our clothes to stay in there. Well, we have to do that for virtually all of our tools, though, so that's not... So that could be something that I made in seven Yeah, if your dust collection is consists like ours from a a soap vac kind of thing, uh, you will have to make some adapters for your tools. Now, and this is not just for this saw, but I'm working on making uh, custom plates. And uh, you simply use the existing plate as a template. But this saw, because it has this uh, high point here, which I really don't understand why it has it, requires you to uh, take some wood from the underside in order to fit. So it's a little harder than many other saws to, to create a plate, but of course not impossible. And the reason why I chose three plates is so I can have zero clearance on one. I might actually make a fourth to make a zero clearance for the small uh, curved plate, because the two blades that uh, we're using, this one and this one, is actually, I realize there's a piece of wood there. I know. That's what I said, we need to clean that up. Anyway, sorry. After we're finished filming, I need to take a piece of wood that fall, fall here. But I'm very pleased with the overall ability of the saw to uh, manage the, the sawdust that it creates. And I will definitely show you, I mean, as you can see, I've already done in a couple of them. Now oh, that's serious. <laughs> no one will see it, it's in the bottom. It looks really nice on top. So that's alright, that's what we care, right? We only care about the top. Sure. Gentlemen, we only care about the top. Yeah. Innuendo meant this time. <clears throat> so overall, the million dollar question. Would I buy this saw again? Having used this saw for over 300 projects and over two years now in a very consistent basis. I would say with this that I've used it several times weekly, every every week of the year. I would buy this saw again. It has held very well. And keep in mind that we do move it a lot around. It's not a stationary saw. Uh, the wheels are very sturdy. They are exactly as they were the day we bought it. And it collapses in a very compact size that for a grass shop, especially if you actually want to use it as a grass, it is very important, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is what they call a, a side saw and it has the ability to expand to allow you to use a little bigger piece of equipment. So this comes out and also that gives you a very decent according to cobalt, up to 31 inches of uh, width. And it, it is pretty decent, I mean, you know, the... Uh, I always forget my terms when I'm on camera. <laughs> but the, the fence will lock on this. And then that's another nice thing that you can use it because this fence actually moves easily, stays, doesn't stay put, especially if you plan to 
make a small movement, let's say we cut a piece and want to cut another piece, you can see how cutting one push, it went very easily and unfortunately it can lock in this position. I wish it couldn't lock in this position, but it can. But if you want to use the, the removable, it doesn't want to lock in the straight position, that's interesting. But then if you have it correctly, you can use this and now this is steady and you can use this to, to change the, the distance if you have bigger pieces to cut. So this can be used in more than one way. I would buy the saw again. I would like to see Cobalt making a couple of improvements. I would definitely like a different plate and a different way to hold the plate in place because this didn't, and as you can see, the, the small part of this was glued and it has come across. Oh, it can come across. It didn't come across, it came off, which is not really good. That shows you that they, they tried to save money where, where they could. And of course, that creates a problem with wood either dipping down as you're cutting or uh, depending on the orientation that you have it, it can generate problems. So on my list, I would like to see Cobalt do something different with the plate. I would like Cobalt to do something that would allow you, once you have the fence, to move it in any direction and still stay true as it relates to the blade. And also a little different mechanism to lock the mechanism that allows the blade to tilt so you cannot accidentally knock it off. I also think that for some reason it does use a lot of power because on several occasions we have tripped the fuses in our um, garage even though this was the only thing that we were using that was electrical. Because very slowly we have transitioned to power uh, tools that are battery operated. I found that with the lithium revolution, the, the lithium batteries provide you as much power and longevity and length of use almost as good as the corded ones and we routinely use our cordless tools. I don't even remember the last time we used actually a corded tool, do you? Um, we had to use the drill because we were drilling out something with the, uh, with the bits, portion of the bits. I don't remember what project it was, but that's the last time. But that was a, that's a rare thing, we don't, we don't usually use them. So. It is overall a good saw, and if you consider that it costs, it's in the entry level because it's a job saw, so it, it costs a couple of hundred, a few hundred dollars, you know. I want to say something about pricing here. I received many comments on my first video about how I was wrong about how much money I paid for the saw. Folks, I bought the saw, I know how much money I paid for it. I just find it humorous that people tell me, oh, you're wrong, that's not how much you pay. With the only exception of the person that, that is with me when I buy tools, I'm the only person that knows how much my tools are worth. And in other areas of the country, you might be cheaper or more expensive. Or even in, in your area, going to a different store can be a different price, right? Mm -hmm. When I bought this saw, I bought it because I burned my previous saw. That, that's a whole different story. Uh, but. I was working on a project and I burned the saw and this happened to be on a manager special at Lowe's and I thought it was a good price so I purchased it. But in any case it's a sub $300 saw. So you will find it somewhere below $300. Uh, I'm not trying to upset anyone but I paid $249 for it so I apologize if you cannot find it for $249 but that's how much I paid for it. I understand the normal price is about 279 but in either case it is an inexpensive saw when you consider that table saws can go to several thousand dollars, right? Now I plan my next either purchase or gift as the holiday approach <coughs> idea. I want it to be a track saw. I'm looking forward to have a track saw 
Uh, when we were building the, the organization system a couple of weeks ago for our garage, uh, a track saw would have made our life much easier. Uh, we could not use this because big seed goods are very dangerous to cut using the, this table saw, this size table saw, even fully extended. And uh, while we have done it, we have done it using two or three people. You know, I cannot do it by myself safely for sure. But I also cannot buy a, a bigger saw for the saw, right? And where would I put it? It, it? Even if it was not a matter of uh, economics, in, or it is not for you, unless you have a really big saw. Hey, April, can I come walk in your work saw? Unless you are April Wilker, Wilkerson and have a huge saw, you cannot really buy a very big saw because they are pretty much stationary, they're very heavy, and they take space. This has been designed so we can bring a car in when we don't work in the saw. So that, that wouldn't work. Oh, and the point we forgot, I think, is that this also, did we mention that it uh, folds? I think you did. Yeah, it folds down into a small space. <clears throat> so your uh, star rating for this saw? For me, maybe three and a half. Well, I think maybe for uh, sentimental reasons, because it has served us so well over a period of time, I, I would probably give it a four or a four and a half. But the three main problems, again, that I see with this saw is the plate, is the fence, and the lock mechanism that allows the blade to, to move to 45 degrees. I think outside those three items, I don't think I have any other complaints. The dust collection is pretty good overall. Mm -hmm. And definitely the ability of the saw to, to close. You can close it by yourself. It's not a hard thing to do. And you can easily move it around. We routinely move it around. Actually, those workers of the channel for a while, you probably have noticed that uh, lately we've been using different angles. Actually, I'm sitting right in front of our uh, bench, our, our foldable bench. The original, the one and only foldable bench. And you can see that gives us much, much more space in the shop. So, in conclusion, yes, I recommend this saw. This is not an endorsed uh, video by Cobalt. I do like Cobalt and I had some of their products. And I would recommend Cobalt in general. I would definitely recommend this specific product. And I do hope that this little uh, vlog style episode was of some use to you, especially if you're planning to buy a saw. For the money, I say it's worth it. What is your vote? And uh, we said we're going to turn the fan off. No, we didn't. Yeah. So this is our show for today. If uh, you enjoyed this uh, episode, please smash that like button. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what you want to see in our channel. We're going to see you again on Sunday with another project. And of course on Wednesday with another uh, general content uh, video from the Grass Wizard, Elpida, and the Everyone Can Do It Do It Yourself Urban Channel. We bid you a great week. <laughs>